You've had so much attention over this last couple of years, and I've been digging into the research and just been fascinated by everything that you've been up to. And I just love your stance on the vision you have for humanity in terms of how we can all live better lives. And I think you simplify a lot of things in this book, which some things people don't like to simplify. They like to complicate. And I think that's what's gotten you a lot of attention is that you try to really simplify a lot of these things. Well, I try to make everything concrete so that it's right. actually implementable. Right. I mean, there's a lot of high-level abstractions in the book because it ranges up into the theological and the philosophical, but it's always grounded in what you can actually do in your life practically. Mm -hmm. You want to bridge that gap from the highest abstraction down to the lowest level of behavior so that it becomes implementable. And that's how philosophical concepts take on their meaning, right? Because they have to they have to have some impact on the way you see the world and the way you act in the world. Or they're not fully realized, they're not understood. Because partly what we mean, I would say, when we say that we understand something, it's kind of a strange phrase to understand something, but it means to be able to embody it in a shift of view and a shift of action. And then you've got it, it's graspable, it's in your hand. Embody something in a shift of view? Mm -hmm. well, they're the same, well, they're the same thing, eh? because your perceptions are very tightly linked to your actions because of course when you're acting you're aiming at something you have to be devoted towards some 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 aim some target right. we, we, we play that out in sports all the time yeah that's why sports are so entertaining for people is because they dramatize the idea of aim right and then and not only of aim but of the pursuit of excellence in pursuit of that aim that's the game and the reason it's a spectacle and the reason that people participate in it is because it dramatizes something absolutely essential about life. And so you want to take philosophical abstractions and you want to use them to, to structure your aim. And then your perceptions organize around that aim. Mm. And then you act it out. And then you've got it. That's, then then it's, it's become part of your life. Mm -hmm. it's, not just an, it's, just, it's not just a philosophical abstraction that floats free in space. Why is there so much conflict in, in the world? Is it because there's so many different perceptions that people have? On well, what they think should be right or what sure. they Well, be part equal? of it is, part of it, of course, there's conflict because we have real problems. And so life is actually difficult, independent of, the, of psychological foolishness, let's say. Independent of the obstacles that we put in our own path. It's life already is challenging. It's already, it's already fatally challenging. Right, life is the ultimate challenge. We will die. Yes, yes. And, so there know, is well. a challenge, yeah. Yes, uh, well. Uncertainty, no, 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 no. fear, pain, all those yes, things. Yes, all the thing, all, everything that goes along with suffering is a challenge and it's, it's, it's the full challenge because it takes everything you have. And so part of the reason we disagree is because there are complex problems to solve. And then we also disagree because we're willfully blind and because we're more ignorant than we should be and we're not everything we should be. And, we tilt towards malevolence from time to time and we betray each other and ourselves. And so we take a bad lot in many ways and make it worse. Now, not always, obviously, and we don't have to, but right. that's sort of the baseline that we're working against. And I think people are most disappointed in life when they're disappointed in themselves. You know, they see Absolutely. that they've made things worse than they had to be, even though the baseline can be pre pretty brutal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and so the book and all my lectures, I suppose, are 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 put forward in an attempt to take the high-level philosophical abstractions and to make them into something that's actionable. And to take so. the next best action in your mm -hmm. life to mm -hmm. improve your life, mm -hmm. so we don't mm -hmm. have to suffer as much. Mm -hmm. Well, and hopefully also so that people around you don't have to either. So one of the things I've yeah. been talking to my audiences about is the relationship between responsibility and meaning, which mm -hmm. is, the, uh, uh, what would you say, it's a, it's a constant refrain in the book. It's mm -hmm. one of its underlying um, um, messages, let's say, or themes is a better way of thinking about it. Um, you know, if, if you start with the presumption that there's a baseline of suffering in life and that that can be uh, exaggerated by, as a consequence of human failing, as a consequence of malevolence and betrayal and self-betrayal and deceit and all those things that we do to each other and ourselves that we know that aren't good, that amplifies the suffering. That's sort of the baseline against which you have to work. And, and, and it's contemplation of that often that makes people hopeless and depressed and anxious and overwhelmed and yeah. all of that, and, and, and they have the reasons. But you need something to put up against that. And what you put up against that is meaning. Meaning is actually the instinct that helps you guide yourself through that catastrophe. And most of that meaning is to be found in the adoption of responsibility. 
So if you think, for example, if you think about the people that you admire, well, mm -hmm. you think about when you have a clear conscience first. Because yeah. that's a good thing to aim at, which is something different than happiness, right? Um, a clear conscience is different than happiness. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. That's you're not better. Like guilting yourself, you're not feeling bad about yourself. That's right. You feel yeah. that you've justified clean. you've justified your existence, yeah. right? And so you're not waking up at three in the morning in a cold sweat thinking about all the terrible things that you've involved yourself in. Mm. What you, you know, said to someone that you shouldn't have said, mm -hmm. or how you acted, or mm -hmm. lied, what or opportunity deceit. you lost, or or mm -hmm. or or yeah, or or the things that you've that you've let go that you should have capitalized on, and mm -hmm. all of that. And so, if you think about the times when you're at peace with yourself with regards to how you're conducting yourself in the world, it's almost always conditions under which you've adopted responsibility, mm. right? At least the most, the most guilt I think that you can experience perhaps is the sure knowledge that you're not even taking care of yourself so that you're leaving that responsibility to other people because that's pretty pathetic and I, unless you're psychopathic. And, you know, and, and you're living a parasitical life. And, mm. and that, that characterizes a very small minority of people. And an even smaller minority think that's justifiable. But most of the time you're in guilt and shame because you're not, you're, you're not, not only are you not taking care of yourself, let's say, so someone else has to, but you're not living up to your full potential. And so there's an existential weight that goes along with that. So, so you suffer even more. Mm -hmm. When you don't take care of yourself or take the best actions or do the work that you know you can do and mm -hmm. you rely on someone else to support you financially, emotionally, mm -hmm. physically, whatever, you know, home, whatever it may be. Yeah, well, because you're not only, you're not only not being what you could be, you're interfering with someone else being what they could be, right? So you're, you're, you're not only a void, you're a drain. Right. Jesus, that's a catastrophe. And but we usually don't even know it when, the, when we're in that situation because mm -hmm. we're in a depressed state or we're... Or we don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. You know, you wake up at three in the morning and you know, and so, and then you think of the people that you, so you admire yourself, or perhaps you can at least live with yourself when you're taking responsibility, at least for yourself. And so that settles your conscience. But then if you look at the people that you spontaneously admire, and so the act of spontaneously admiring someone is the manifestation of the instinct for meaning, right? So this is partly why people are so enamored of sports mm -hmm. figures, because yeah. the sports figures are playing out the drama of attaining the goal of attaining a certain kind of, let's say, psychological and physical perfection in pursuit of the goal. That's the drama. And to spontaneously admire that is to have that instinct for meaning latch on to something that can be used as a model. And then that model should be transcribed into something that's applicable in life. You know, and you really like to see in an athletic performance, you really like to see someone who's extremely disciplined and, and, mm -hmm. in, and in shape do something physically remarkable. but. And, and to stretch themselves even beyond their previous exploits, because you really like to see a brilliant move in, yes. a, in an athletic match. But you also like to see that person ensconced in a broader moral framework, so that not only are they trying to win and disciplining themselves in pursuit of that victory and then stretching themselves so they're continually getting better, but they're doing it in a way that helps develop their whole team and that's mm. good for the sport in general and that reflects well on right. the broader culture. They're a great leader right. in their team, they're positive, they're good uh, sportsmen against the competitors, yeah. they're not negative towards the other people, they're lifting them up to, yeah. like the ultimate that's right. so that human. They, that's right, so that they can, they can work for their own improvement in a way that simultaneously works for the improvement of their team and, that, and, the, and for the sport sport and well mm -hmm. and then to the degree that that spills over into the broader culture so much the better right. so that's all being dramatized in a in an, in an athletic event and it's really it's not philosophical it's concrete right it's dramatized in the world and that's what the games represent and so well and it's partly because well in some sense life is a game I it mean, is it is in that you're always the the analogy is that in in life like in sports you're 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 setting forth an aim, and then arranging your perceptions and your actions in pursuit of that aim. And that you also generally do it while cooperating and competing with other people. Right. So that's also the game-like element as well. And all yeah. of that's dramatized in athletics. Yeah. That's like philosophy for people who aren't philosophical. And I'm not being smart about that. Yeah. I? It's like it really is philosophy for people who aren't being philosophical, because it's played out. you know. And you can see it too. You can see the spontaneous appreciation for the human spirit manifest itself when you see people rise to their feet spontaneously mm -hmm. in a sports arena when they see someone do something particularly remarkable. You see an athlete who's extremely trained, 
stretch themselves beyond what you'd think is a normative human limit and yeah. everyone celebrates that like spontaneously so it's quite something to yeah. to behold and so taking back to responsibility and meaning yeah. <clears throat> when we're watching sports or someone do this act what does this do for us with in terms of responsibility and meaning well it it it, it helps us figure out what we can imitate Gives us a model. Right. Yes, it's a model. Right? Here's a model of something that I respect. Mm -hmm. Well, even what philosophy is, or even theology for that matter, is an abstract model. Like it's laid out in words. Now the problem often is, is it becomes so abstract that people don't know how to bring it back down to, to embodiment. Yeah. Yes. Whereas something like, like the drama of a sports event is sort of midway between philosophy and action, right? Mm. It's, so it's, it's not entirely abstracted because it's not only coded in words. It's acted out. It's visual. You can see mm -hmm. an example of what just happens, mm -hmm. and you can try to reverse engineer how they mm -hmm. did that. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, exactly. Well, at, le at least you, the fact that you admire the person means that you might start to try to act like them. Now, mm -hmm. it's not easy, and maybe that, would mean, maybe that would mean that you start to discipline yourself with regards to a particular sport, but it might also be that you start to mimic or are at least affected in some way by their, their sportsman, sportsman-like behavior, right, yeah. which is the ground of a certain kind of ethic because if you can play well with others which is sort of the hallmark of a good sport then that actually means that you're a reasonably sophisticated and civilized person it's really important to learn to play well with others there isn't yeah. that's the ground of ethics and if you can do it there in that setting then hopefully you could translate it into life well, setting well right that's exactly right that's, that's what the goal you, well that's what you hope for right. yeah that's the goal of the so if the if the goal of the game is to put the ball through the ball into the net then the goal of having games is to produce people who can take proper aim no matter where they are right that's exactly what we're trying to do with mm -hmm. with 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 athletics do not agree with something you don't agree with Ooh. like if we're gonna if we decide you and me that we're doing this we don't go back and say well i didn't really mean it so if you if you don't agree don't agree fight object 